Oh 
hands. Who are they for? Have they had a year like this one before? Have they washed and scrubbed and sanitised? Got dry and sore and moisturised? Have they done less work? Been at home more? Or have they worked harder than ever before? Have they helped a neighbour, a parent or friend? Have they longed for all these restrictions to end? Have they missed friends, felt too far apart? Have they lost a loved one and clutched at your heart? This Christmas is different. It can't be the same. The world all around us has obviously changed. But the meaning of Christmas, the heart of it all, began in a baby so precious and small. With no glitz or sparkle, no parties or feasts, he came for the broken, the lonely, the least. The hands of his earth dad were dusty and worn, hardened by woodwork, but chosen for more. The hands of his mother were softer, but weary, holding her baby, eyes happy, but teary. The hands of the shepherds who visited first were rough, and strong and ingrained with dirt. The hands of the angels were lifted in praise to the one we call Saviour, the Ancient of Days. To the babe whose smooth hands, so weak and so small, would one day carry the wrongs of us all, so that every person on earth may know how much they are loved by how far he would go to rescue, redeem, forgive and restore, to give us the life we were born for, a life of meaning, of joy, peace and love as we walk hand in hand with our Father above. So whether your heart is heavy or light, with hands held open or screwed up tight, whether they're full or empty, or tired, work-worn, or restless, or uninspired, just know that you don't have to be alone to carry your burdens and trials on your own. Jesus came to walk by your side, to fill you with hope to be your guide. Look at your hands. Who are they for? If they take hold of Jesus, they'll need nothing more. Good morning and welcome to the online service at Christchurch Warminster. It's hard to believe, isn't it, that this Sunday is the last Sunday of 2020 and what a year it's been. Who would have thought that um, we'd have experienced the things that we've experienced this year. But today is a day of joy and celebration as we continue through carols, through our prayers to celebrate the birth of Jesus. 
And during our sermon, we're going to be thinking forward with hope to the year ahead. And Stuart is going to be sharing God's word with us. And today's theme is moving forward in uncertain times. But before we begin our worship, let's be still for a moment as I lead us in prayer. We come to worship with a song of thanks in our hearts, a song of redemption, a song of hope and renewal. We pray for joy in our hearts, hope in our God, love to forgive and peace upon the earth. Holy Spirit, fill our hearts with your love and power. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning. How about we stand while we pray together, preparing our hearts for this morning's service. When we're in church or at home, our worship should be an interactive action where we expect to encounter God, especially at Christmas. Emmanuel, God with us. So today, let's get ourselves ready using what I call Danielle Strickland's Surrender Prayer. We start by raising our hands up as in surrender and join in the prayer with me. Father God, on our own, we haven't got this. We can only go so far in our own strength. We run out of steam or choose the wrong paths. Lord, we are sorry for the wrong we have done. We ask you to take control of all areas of our lives. Lord, we freely give it all up to you. Then we move our arms into an action of receiving, hands outstretched, palms turned up. Lord, we turn from our wrongdoing and we look to you to provide for us. We ask for your great wisdom, your strength and your perfect love to fill us and enable us in worship today and every day. Then moving our hands slightly forward in a giving gesture. Lord, we pray you help us to give freely as we freely receive. Help us to pour out generously, to give of time, our skills, our efforts and our love that you have graciously given to us. And finally, arms stretched out, we pray. Dear Jesus, call us into mission as you do, to the lost, to the lowly, the least, the unloved and the overlooked. Open our eyes and open our hearts, Lord. Help us to be your hands and your feet in our world, our town, in our families and front lines, Lord, wherever you call us. And as it says in Isaiah 55, let us now worship the God who came to be with us and seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Amen.
Let's pray. I'll leave space for you to add your own prayers. After the wise men had gone, Mary and Joseph were alone with their baby. Just as Christmas Day has passed, perhaps this year the ability to see those we love hasn't been possible, and there's a real sense of loss and aloneness remaining. We pray for the comfort and presence of Jesus at this time and the opportunities in the new year to see family and friends. As the angel appeared encouraging Mary and Joseph to flee because they were in danger, we pray for all of those in danger in this country and around the world, fleeing from poverty, exploitation, violence, disaster, famine and war. We pray for an end to injustice and your miracle of safety, provision and peace. As we read how Herod, in his furious zeal for dominance, slaughtered hundreds of innocent children, we remember the persecuted, the refugees, and those youngsters who are vulnerable to poverty and danger. We pray for a society that protects and nurtures those who are needing safety and care. We especially thank you and ask for your blessing on the work of charities like Compassion, whose mission is to free children from poverty in Jesus' name, safeguarding the next generation. We pray against brutal regimes around the world where money and power are worshipped and the people terrorised. May your justice reign and continue to bless the work of Tear Fund, supporting those vulnerable communities. As we wonder what 2021 will bring, we pray with hope for the future, knowing that Jesus has overcome, that God uses all situations to bring about his glory. We remember how the angel again spoke to Joseph to return home. May we listen to the prompts of the Holy Spirit as we look for direction in our own lives and Seek his will in all that we do, each day and in the coming year ahead. Amen. Oh
The reading is taken from Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 to 23. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realised that he'd been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learnt from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea, in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets, that he would be called a Nazarene. This is the word of the Lord. Colossians 1, 1-14 Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to God's holy people in Colossae, the faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people. The faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as it had been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. You learnt it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf, and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and praise him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be with you again and to be able to share from God's word uh, as we think about um, looking forward into 2021. Um, but I hope you've also had an opportunity to have some comfort and some joy uh, over the last couple of days celebrating Christmas. So before we have a look at God's word, uh, let's pray. So I'm going to pray for us now. Father, we thank you for your word. And we thank you, Lord, that in these uncertain times, we know we can always turn to it. Now, as we explore these passages, please, Lord, give us the wisdom of understanding and the thirst to respond. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. 
So, you know, as I reflected uh, on um, what sort of message I was going to give uh, today, thinking about uh, moving forward in uncertain times, um, I guess I was reflecting on the fact that um, that actually uh, this feels a little bit more significant uh, this year, maybe, than perhaps in previous years when we've looked forward to a new year in that time immediately after Christmas. And I was also reflecting that actually over the last few years, I've had several opportunities to um, to share from the Word uh, on the first Sunday after Christmas. Um, and I'm trying to work out whether I keep getting given the short straw here um, or whether there's something else uh, that God's trying to get me to say um, in that period straight after Christmas. Um, because after all, you know, Christmas, following Christmas is actually quite a tough gig when it comes to sharing from the Word. I mean, how do you actually beat um, Jesus' birth? That, that's pretty hard. So as part of that, I was actually looking back at some of the messages that I've shared in the past. And there were several key themes that seem to be coming out in those. Firstly, you know, how do we reflect on the year that is just finishing? Secondly, uh, what is, are we going to change as we head into uh, a new year? And thirdly, what New Year's resolutions does God want us to make to help us grow closer in our relationship with him? And as I said a minute ago, I think this year feels a bit different. Well, it certainly does for me. The magnitude of the uncertainty of the times that we are living in seems to be on a whole new scale. Uh, and that does apply whether we are in relationship with Christ or not. Not only are we living with COVID, we're living with a messy UK exit from Europe, to name just two things that are resulting in significant disruption to our lives and that sort of disruption is, is touching everything it's touching physical health it's touching mental health it's touching financial well-being it's touching our fellowship and our friendships with each other it's touching school it's touching university it's touching work life in fact it's uncertainty that is unparalleled in in many people's lives including my own now, I haven't seen this level of uncertainty uh, all the time that I've been here on this earth. So how do we respond to that level of uncertainty and move forward in 2021? Well, I guess for me, the first thing that we can do is actually recognise that uncertainty is really nothing new. In fact, uncertain times have been with us for, for centuries and centuries. At the time of Jesus' birth, God's people were living under an oppressive Roman rule. Joseph and the heavily pregnant Mary were required to travel to Bethlehem to participate in the Roman census. They found nowhere to stay in Bethlehem. So they ended up in a cold and I suspect not especially healthy stable. That is where Christ was born. Then in this morning's reading, we hear from Matthew's Gospel that no sooner had Jesus been born, but Joseph and Mary need to flee to Egypt, to a foreign land, they don't know, uh, in order to escape Herod, who is trying to find the baby Jesus and kill him. So they remain in that foreign land until it's safe for them to return, until after Herod has died. But of course, when they return, they still can't go back to the land of Judea where Joseph's forefathers were from. They end up settling in the province of Galilee and, of course, in Nazareth where Jesus grows up. So, as I said, uncertain times are nothing new. Mary and Joseph certainly been, seem to be living in them over 2,000 years ago. So as we reflect on our own situation personally and also as a church, how does God want us to respond to these present uncertain times? Well, for me, I think Paul puts it very well in the first 14 verses of chapter 1 of his letter to the Colossians. The Colossian church was also going through a period of uncertainty. And so Paul starts in verses 3 and 4 
by telling the Colossians that he prays constantly and gives thanks for them as brothers and sisters in Christ and for the church worldwide, wherever it may be. I suggest that as we think about moving forward, that's a great place to start. Praying and giving thanks for each other and for the church. Paul, of course, as well, when he wrote this letter, it is thought that he was in prison, so of course he was also going through uncertain times, not un really understanding what his future was. And uncertain times like those that Paul were, were, was going through, and like Mary and Joseph experienced at the time of Jesus' birth, um, are still there today. So through the uncertainty and the challenges of daily life in 2020, shouldn't we respond in the same way as Paul, starting with prayer and giving thanks? Especially as we've seen God this year work in so many different ways, ways that we could not even have imagined. We've seen the good news of Jesus spreading. We've seen personal faith strengthened as people have found new ways to connect with Jesus. We've seen God's people show the true light of Christ through their acts of kindness to each other and to the community. The gospel is bearing fruit all over the world. Think about us here in Christchurch. Through online worship, different ways of getting together, making and sharing the significant parts of, of our church life and doing things differently, we have seen God at work in Warminster. Think about this Christmas. What have we been doing? New and exciting things. Pop-up nativities. We've we've had uh, Jesus rocks, and we've had we've had online and drive-in services. Who'd have thought 12 months ago that actually our Christmas Eve carol service would have been a, an, a drive-in, an online event in the warmest community car park? That certainly wasn't on my radar this time last year. But haven't we also pared back our worship? We've taken away the fancy stuff. We've got back to the basics of our relationship with God and focused on what really matters. What a great platform to start a new year with a clear and simple perspective of how we are in relationship with God and ready and willing to see where he wants to take us in 2021. In Colossians chapter 1 from verse, verse 9 onwards, Paul seeks to encourage the Colossian church through his commitment to them and through prayer as we consider how we respond as God's church to what has gone before us in 2020 and what is to come in 2021, we should be thinking and doing the same thing, shouldn't we? So looking at how we move forward from verse 10 in Colossians chapter 1, Paul gives us some great pointers. Live our lives in a way that is worthy to the Lord. Continue to look to bear fruit as we serve him. To grow in our knowledge of him. Be strengthened in his power. Great endurance and patience. And joyfully give thanks to God. So as we face into an uncertain 2021, I feel God is encouraging. In fact, no, I will say he, I'm sure he's imploring us to do these things. It is important to have these basics right, but not just to survive, because that's not what we want to do as God's people. We want to thrive as God's people. And that applies to 2021 and beyond. And of course, there is another way of thinking about how we can move forward and how our relationship and being right with God can be expressed. And that is through the fruits of the Spirit, as Paul describes them in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And just as a reminder, those fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When God sees in those in us, he knows we are becoming more like Jesus. I'd also venture to say that if we are showing these fruits, while we might not have all or even just a fraction of the answers as to what is going to happen in 2021 and what 2021 will actually throw at us, with these fruits, we are equipped 
to deal with anything that comes our way. We've also, throughout 2020, and especially during the season of Advent, focused on the themes of comfort and joy and the hope Christ brings as we discover that real comfort and that real joy that you have in relationship with Jesus. So as we end 2020 and we look forward to 2021, facing these uncertain times, doesn't that true comfort and true joy and that hope in Jesus become even more relevant to us as perhaps we had thought about in the past? And key to having that is to listen to God with a clear mind and a right heart so that we we clearly hear what God has to say to us and what God is looking for us to do as we serve him going forward. And again, as I so often pray, it isn't just about listening to what God says, it's then actually going on and acting on it. The good news of Jesus, Christ born just over 2,000 years ago in that cold, smelly, unhealthy stable, is no less a good news story today as it was 2,000 years ago. In, in those uncertain times, as we live in these uncertain times now. In fact, that salvation event in some ways maybe just feels more, even more relevant to us today. As Paul says in Colossians 1.13, that event has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and placed us into his kingdom of light. So as I said a moment ago, and I'll unashamedly say it again, that moving forward for us has to be to pray, listen and act on the exciting things that God has in store for us next year and beyond. Amen.
before we go about the rest of our day, let us pray. Jesus, you gave your all to our world. In the bleakness of that stable, love was born that day. Pure love, undiluted, poured out for all who call on your name. Such grace, undeserved, deserves a response in the life that we lead. Forgive our ingratitude for all that you have done. Draw us to your word. Give us a new song to sing that will resonate throughout this world and begin with us today. Amen. Set your hearts on the Lord, who is trustworthy, faithful, and the giver of the gift of peace, that he would fill you with his life-giving presence this Christmas season, that others would recognise his peace in you and him as Saviour, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.